Well, tomorrow is a day that a lot of people have been looking forward to. I've never quite seen anything like it on uh, social media and on television in anticipation of an event where the moon is going to uh, cover up most of the sun and it'll be a unique experience once in a lifetime for many people. And, uh, you know, this is a, a great event. I, I think it is exciting. I saw one person interviewed in some town and where the peak of the uh, eclipse is supposed to be. And he had a bunch of these uh, cargo containers, cargo storage containers, and he was renting them out for people to stay in for $1,500. And I thought, now that is something, somebody's wanting to see the eclipse pretty bad to stay in. And I mean the whole town, every house, people that had have... Uh, in some towns along this band through the USA, people that have their homes, they've left their homes, and they've rented them out for three or $4,000 for the week. And it's unreal what people are doing and the lengths they're going to to see this natural phenomenon. But it is a, a, a phenomenal thing to see. But I want to tell you this morning that we know exactly when it's going to happen. We know exactly what day, and we know exactly where it's going to uh, happen. We know the viewing uh, is going to be peak at this place or that place, going to start at this time and finish at that time. I mean, it's down to precise, even to the second in some areas where it's going to be, you know, scientists have it measured. The media is, is all in. And I just ha can't help but think as a pastor how wonderful it would be if people would get so excited and they would throw their cares to the wind and invest everything they have and go this extra mile and plan out every detail for the second coming of Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart that he is coming back. In fact, I'm one of those people that believes he's been here lots of times. And I would tell you that on some other time. But throughout the Bible, the, Jesus was talked about. He walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. He walked with Enoch and took him to heaven. He was in the fiery furnace for the three Hebrew children. He has been here. He's going to be here. And I tell you, we don't know the time or the hour, but we should be more excited about that than any other event that's planned for our future. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he says this in verse... 10. We're going to read a few verses here in chapter 3, verse 10 of 2 Timothy. He's writing to his son in the ministry. Paul is trying to train Timothy. So I like to read Timothy because I feel like it's a real good way to learn because Paul was teaching Timothy how to be a good preacher, a good evangelist, a good Christian. And he said in verse 10, You have fully known my doctrine. You have known my manner of life. Paul's writing to Timothy. He says, Timothy, you know my purpose. You know my faith. You know my long suffering and charity and patience. And he says this, persecution and affliction is part of it. Persecution and affliction came to me first at Antioch. The Bible says Antioch is the very first church where they began to call the believers Christians. And I'll tell you, that's important to me for this day because Christians are being persecuted more than ever right now. In 2016, there was more people put to death for being a Christian than any other year on record. Right now in our country that was established as a Christian nation, but Christians are being persecuted. Christians are being put down for their beliefs in the Bible. And as Union Valley knows, here we believe the Bible 100% from beginning to the end. We believe in all the Ten Commandments, the teaching of Jesus, the Old Testament and the New Testament. We believe that Jesus Christ did not cancel out the Old Testament. He fulfilled the Old Testament. And He's coming again someday for all His children, right is right and wrong is wrong. Most people already know which is which, and we're going to stand firm and say, I am nothing without Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we are going to be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted. 
persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, and persecutions that I endured, but out of them the Lord delivered me. And you can say the same thing. Yes, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Now I want to point out to you that he doesn't say a few that live godly in Christ. He doesn't say this denomination is going to get uh, persecuted. He doesn't say that the old ones will be persecuted and the young ones won't. He doesn't say any kind of uh, words that classify us into groups. He says all Christians, all that will live godly will be persecuted. So I'm going to say something that I was taught all my life based on this scripture, and I'm going to teach it to you, that if you've not been persecuted for Christ, if you've never been made fun of, if you've never been talked about, if nobody ever gives you a hard time, if nobody ever fails to invite you to the party, if people are putting you down or if they've never put you down, if you have never been persecuted for Jesus Christ, you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself this question, am I really living for Jesus? Christ because the fact is you're probably not you're probably trying to fit in with the crowd you're probably talking just like the people around you talk you're probably going to the same places they go you're probably acting just like one of them to fit in and I'm not looking down on anybody this is between you and God I don't know your business you don't know mine I can only I can't even fix my own life but I can tell you this if you're here this morning playing games with God I promise you there's a great day coming and you need to be ready Hey, I would love it if the eclipse day was the rapture day. How about you? Woo! I'll tell you what, after church, would y'all let's just let's just put our money where our faith is. Y'all just write a check for everything you got in your savings account. Just go ahead and make it out to Randall Christie. And then tomorrow, when we're all going up. I'll just drop all those checks down on everybody that's, that we're leaving. Now, y'all are starting to not laugh near as much. When I'm getting worried. Let me tell you something. This is not about man. This is not about any religion. It's not about any particular church. And anybody that tries to say, give all your money to me because tomorrow, that, that's so ridiculous. How many people have done that through time? The Bible says, Jesus himself says, many will come in my name and they shall deceive many. Let's say this together. We will not be deceived. We will not be deceived. We will not be deceived. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. And if I died today, no matter where I was, I know within all that is within me that I'm not worthy but I'm going there because of him. And if you know that down in the depths of your heart, then you have so much more than most people have today. If you live for Jesus, it shows. I've never seen quite so much hate, I don't think. You know, I was just, I guess, in the race wars and everything that went on back in the 60s. I was just, you know, I was born in 64. So this is really the first time in my life that I've experienced what has been happening the last few years in some of these cities. And I'll stand before anybody, any crowd of any size, and I'd say the very same thing. Jesus Christ loves everybody. It doesn't matter what color their skin is. And I am sick and tired of hearing all this racist stuff. Most of us don't feel that way. 
Most of us have got past that. I honestly believe most people in the United States have gotten past that. And it's being brought up day after day after day. It's just another way to persecute Christians. I'm telling they're pulling down historic statues. The next thing, they'll be pulling down the statue of Jesus. They're pulling down statues. The next thing, they're already starting, and you guys know it. They'll be pulling down the cross all over the United States because it offends people who live a different lifestyle or who pray to a different God. A false God that's leading them away from heaven and away from Jesus Christ. I feel sorry for them. One of the greatest things about our world mission team is literally hundreds of thousands of Muslims and non-believers and people that worship other gods have now become Christians. Almost 50,000, Mike, this year. Mike just got back a report from the Kenya mission team that of what's happened in the aftermath of our crusades there. And all the stories about this young person that was going to kill themselves, but they got saved. Or one person that was about to kill other people, but they got saved. And things are changing all around us when people know Jesus Christ, but it comes with a price. When you turn your life over to Jesus Christ, you will be persecuted if you live for him. Now, if your goal is to just be like one of the girls or be just like one of the guys and fit in on social media and Snapchat and all this stuff and do all this nasty stuff online or try to be somebody that you're really not. Let me tell you, you're not that way. That's not who you are. You are not that person. You are a born-again child of God that has a purpose for eternity, just like Paul just said, that has a place God is sitting right now, or he has his angels literally building your mansion. They are there working to build your place in heaven. What are you doing down here for him? Can you believe it? That's what he said. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself. The man of God, the woman of God, the child of God may be completed in Jesus' name. In fact, that's what the very last scripture says here in verse 17. The man of God, which means the child of God, the person of God, the woman of God. The man of God may be perfect. Now, perfect means complete, all right? doesn't mean sinless. It means complete. It means finished work, okay? The man of God may, yes, it is possible. I want you to know it is not hopeless. It is not something that's out of your control. It is not something that the world is going to steal from you. It is possible to actually be a finished product in Jesus' eyes and in Jesus' name, but you've got to live for him. No matter what. Finished, perfected, completed, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Had a guy ask me one time, brother, do you preach grace or do you preach works? I'll tell you what I preach. I preach the Bible that says if you have the grace, you'll also have the works. Because there's nobody, I read, don't read any story in the Bible that where someone was saved and it didn't make any difference in their behavior. I find not one example of that in the Scripture. And I want to ask you today to be that light that says, look, we're not going to adhere to violence we're going to love everybody regardless of their lifestyle or their background or their religion. We're going to love them. We're going to lead them. We're not going to shun them because they act different. We're going to tell them God loves them. If they need a loaf of bread, we're going to give it to them. 
we're going to be like Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to close with this because even though the eclipse, and I'm excited about it too, even though the eclipse is tomorrow, and it is a monumental day in our lives, we don't worship the sun. We don't worship the moon. We don't worship the creation. We worship the creator who did not leave us a mortal creation. Rather, he recreated us in his image to be what he wants us to be and to live a life pleasing to him. And because of that, because of his blood, because our name is sealed in his book, because of those nails and that cross, because of that empty tomb, because he crushed Satan's head, we're going to live forever, and I'm going to live like it as much as I possibly can until he comes. I am ready now to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. If you're a Christian, Share it with somebody this week, would you? Tell somebody about it. You'll never regret sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me?